It's the late May bank holiday weekend in 2023 and walkers and runners are gathering at Birmingham Moseley Rugby Club for the start of the Long Distance Walkers Association's flagship 100 mile challenge, as they have somewhere in Britain nearly every year since 1973. <laughs> this year it's the Elephant, Bear and Bull 100, named for the symbols of Coventry, Warwickshire and Birmingham though it's Worcestershire's Licky Hills that provide a main highlight of the route. I'm Simon, by the way, and I'll be your guide for the next 100 miles. There's an air of muted tension as the catering team dispatches food to the early checkpoints, and walkers line up to hand over drop bags of spare kit. They'll be delivered to the breakfast checkpoint at Kenilworth by Chris Blackwell, who notched up his own 100 on the Marshalls event in late April. Oh, yes, looking forward to it. Remarkably, one of this year's entrants had also signed up for that first 100 50 years ago. But a new job beginning the next day meant Stephen Coveney didn't make the start line. He kept trying. I've finished 10, I've started 15. And when was the first one? 1974. You've just had a compliment. It's, it's for the best moustache. Yeah, on the 100. That, is, that actually doesn't get on the certificate. Oh, uh, no. no. I thought it was going to be unique with that. <laughs> Will the dog be joining you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the checkpoints. <laughs> Before the off, there's a presentation to the son and daughter of the late Roger Cole, who did complete that first event on the South Downs and all of the next 40 hundreds. Some Max pictured here will continue a half century of family tradition by running on this year's event. To commemorate uh, Roger's 40 hundreds, the RDWA have produced a lovely engraved glass, a whiskey glass, and it's a great honour and privilege for me to be asked to present this to Max and Tracy. The presentation is made by Len Fallick, who will match Roger's record 41 completions if he gets round the elephant, bear and bull hundred at the age of 79. Len, I know Dad would be wishing you well. He would want you to do and complete this and to go on and complete more. Not everyone taking part is a veteran. We have over 100 people here who have never completed the 100 before. So if it's your first one, then welcome to the world of hundreds. I warn you, they're addictive, so if you complete this one, it'll probably end up being the first of many for you. And then, time to head for the start, a few hundred yards away, where lead organiser Michael Jones will ring the bell to send 406 runners and walkers on their way. Another 49 faster entrants will start up to four hours later. And off he goes. And they're away, striding out after months of anticipation, keen to get cracking on a journey that will take them west out of Birmingham to the Waisley and Licky Hills and then across the former Forest of Arden. Most will pass through Stratford-upon-Avon at night, turning north for Warwick, Kenilworth and Coventry and then heading west again for the return to Birmingham. Thank you. Once out of the park, a short stretch through a nature reserve leads to the Stratford Canal unexpectedly green, almost bucolic, for somewhere that's well inside the city boundaries. Even the graffitied industrial stretches are picturesque in their way. Len Fallick finds himself walking at the back once again with old friend Keith Warman, the event's official keeper of records. With 71 completions between them, they know how to pace themselves. But as they also know very well, anything can happen to upset a schedule. Boyhood friends Dylan Toombs and Harry Neal, 25 years old and attempting their first 100, will pass through their hometown of Kenilworth at 63 miles, if they get that far. Jill Green, 81 years old. It's wonderful weather, isn't it? Super. Yes, please do. Jill's aiming for her 30th completion, with partner Jim Catchpole, also 81, keeping her company as usual. How's it going? Oh, fine so far. Yeah. 
hot. That's a long way to go yet. <laughs> At the first checkpoint, it's a high pressure rush for the marshals. Four, one, four. Four, one, four, thank you very thank much. You. 65. 65, thank you. Four, five, knots. Four, five, knots. Lovely, thank you. Thank you, marshals. Have a good day. Um, good night. It takes character to do a hundred, <laughs> and there are lots of characters in the LDWA. One of them is Pam Manning. How's your first hundred going? Uh, great, now I've got over my initial nerves. <laughs> I was like a nervous wreck this morning. <laughs> Beyond the main road, cycle paths lead to the Waisley Hills and Checkpoint 2 at Rubery, run by volunteers from South Wales LDWA Group, four of whom completed the Marshalls event. They started making hundreds of sandwiches two hours before the walkers even set off. We really love doing this volunteering bit. It's getting it ready for everybody. And for me personally, and I know my colleagues would feel the same, you see faces that you haven't seen for a year. It's lovely welcoming them. And we want a little bit of Welsh with this as well. For those chasing a fast time, it's a case of grab and go. First away from the checkpoint is Mo Herbert of Exeter. He's raising funds for the ex services charity that helped him through near fatal illness. Are you enjoying it? Yes. Now look, uh, the people who run this checkpoint, are they any good? Very good. <laughs> Very well. There's a festive atmosphere. What's making you all laugh? Oh, I won't say. <laughs> Is it rude? We no, 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 it's not. It's, no, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's confidential. <laughs> Is it fun? Very much so. Lovely day. Beautiful route. It is actually a beautiful route. Yeah, it's that? really nice. It's a little, a little too warm. Five degrees cooler would be perfect. It's a very elegant way of holding a sandwich. Mm. <laughs> Keep going. Some said this would be a flat hundred. The Licky Hills will prove them wrong. Even so, the terrain is not as arduous as that on the Trans Pennine Hundred of 2022. Aaron Hookway was its organiser. Oh, good, mate. <laughs> Number 10, just got to keep going. Andy Hicks has been doing hundreds since 1976, and it might be starting to tell. You've got a, a knee bandage on, is that an issue? <laughs> I mean, it must be. <laughs> Which operation do you want to know about? <laughs> uh. Danny Licheri. Um, Danny, you're not from around here, are you? No, I'm from Exeter. <laughs> yes, that's not really what I meant. No, I'm, I'm from Sardinia. Sardinia. So yeah. today's weather... It's horrible it's... because I'm here in England because I like raining. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you like the rain? Yes. Well, that's why you moved to Devon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so how many hundreds have you done? That is my third one. Yeah. How did you discover this mad world? Uh, just because I'm mad. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> It's very flat in the West Midlands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have a small hairy moment there. <laughs> Just a bit. How does that feel? Well, I'm glad it took me by surprise and I didn't know it was coming. Oh, we're at the top now, and only 88.1 left to go. Julia Warman, seen here on the right, is attempting her 21st 100 after surgery for cancer. We'll meet her and husband Ralph later on. Mike Phelan was a sweeper on the Marshall's Walk. He's grateful for a late change in the weather. To be honest, I've never seen a 25 mile stretch of a walk with so much mud. Um, it, was, it was horrendous. Um, we, we also had rain through the night, um, which gave everyone a good soaking and just freshened the mud up. The spirit of Roger Cole, the first person to do 40 hundreds, lives on in walkers like Glyn Dimmock. 
I was in South Midlands Orienteering Club and I used to run with Roger and his son Matt. He's here actually. He's, he's here today, yeah. So did Roger ruin your life? Yes. Yeah, Big did. time. I did the first one, said I wouldn't do another, and here I am, number six. And that's because of him, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You nearly have a mishap, Roger. Well, yes, off that. Yeah, the balance is beginning to go, I'm afraid. Roger Osgood. Well, um, that, it, happily, it didn't end your hundred. But if it had it done, it would have been a very long hundred career, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes, and enjoyable. How far back with does it go? Around about 82, I think. Golly. With some gaps. Yeah. For family reasons, as much as anything. How many have you done? 28. Oh, this is my 29th. Right now, this is the 29th, but to get to the 30th, that is going to be quite a challenge, isn't it? It is, just to get there. Are you going yes. to try? I see. I, I'll tell you at the end of this. <laughs> because uh, in order to do that, you would have to beat the record for the oldest ever finisher, wouldn't you? Indeed. Yeah. Unless there's the others. <laughs> others. Well, finisher because how old are you? 81. You are 81. And um, what's your fastest time on 100? I don't know, the early 20s, I think. No, it's sub-20 hours. Is it? Keith Warman has told me that must be under a, 20 a dancer, then, perhaps. Yeah, is it? could or be, yeah. I'll check with Keith. Or the Wessex. And you're still a marathon runner? Well, on and off, yes. Yeah, OK. You've done a marathon aged 80. How That's fast? Right. Uh, four, 420. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you had a word written on your running vest. What was that? England. <laughs> <laughs> for the over 80s. Yumi Bag lives in England but comes from Japan. I tried last year's uh, 100 mile. It was good. Um, but I started having a knee pain, yeah. and then I was a bit worried that I injured myself. So I thought maybe I should try next year, and then that's why I came back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Would you say it's a peculiarly English thing we do? Very much so. I, I've never seen, seen such a sort of a totally British organisation before. It's so British. Well, uh, what's I, British about it? I don't know. Like it's just a, the sandwiches. Yeah, yes, but uh, it's just, uh, I don't know the percentage of non-British actually in this organisation. It's so rare to see yeah. non-British. I, yeah. I, I think it's, a, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it though. <laughs> Got a lovely checkpoint. Yeah, lovely okay. checkpoint, lovely people. Just round to the left there, sir. Sally's being clipped. Thank Hello. you. Sally's been clever this one. Wonderful, thank you. Well, well done, Glenn! Well done, Glenn! Well done, Glenn! Well done, Glenn! Well done, Brian Fisher is on a mission. It's really important to you that you finish yes, this one. Yes, it's my 20th. Yeah, and how did last time go? I, I uh, retired at uh, Mantor uh, with sickness, um, so I want to go for my 20th today. At the checkpoint, Time to dig out the next section of a 36-page route description. Off on leg four, Sandra Brown. Everything is wonderful. <laughs> and everywhere is wonderful. And I love it all. Sandra holds walking world records. She and husband Richard have notched up more than 350 completions of events of 100 miles or more. But this one's a favourite. Everything is great and everywhere is great. And above all, actually, the people are just wonderful, wonderful, aren't they? Yeah. Every checkpoint, every group. Oh, my word, they're all kind of there for us and we're all there for each other. Well, life well, doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> As the walkers stride briskly onwards, midday starter Max Cole, son of Roger, is coming up behind. Enjoying it at the moment. Although the sun is quite warm.
Jerzy Matuszewski, aiming for his 18th finish, is instantly recognisable with his Bermuda shorts, albeit without the teddy bear he carried round last year's event. Do you have to be slightly mad to do the 100? Not really. I see. It's, 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 it suits some people, doesn't it? People don't do it because they're mad. It's a challenge. Or, once they've done one, it does grip you. It's like when I was on the 24-hour racing on the track. Once I'd done my first one, that was it. You had to come back and do another. And what did you manage? 123 and a half is my best. Came second at Berry. Pride and joy that was. <laughs> oh, I do like tricks. Yeah. yeah, that one feels good, does it? It, uh, it does, yeah. Hi, Simon. Yeah, this is my first, uh, first 100. Qualified on the Shropshire 50. And... Um, well, so far so good, but it's, uh, it's still early days, isn't it? That looks as if it was needed. Lovelier every moment. <laughs> <laughs> Izzy Creed, on her second hundred, is joined by fellow members of Oxford University Walking Club. Gordon's on the event. Tom's checking it out. This is a bit more challenging than most of what you do in the club, but only a bit. Only a bit. Yeah, only a bit. <laughs> yeah. Depends what you call challenging. <laughs> the led 15 people across the Panam Way, that was quite difficult. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so you've got the bug now? I've got the bug now, yes. yes. And Tom, you're going to get the bug. I'm going to get. I've got. I've got the bug. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. just haven't. You couldn't. You were unable bugs. to get the qualifier because of, yeah. you were not very. Yeah, well. yeah. You are quite a lot younger than most of the people who do it. What do you think of the rest of us? I think some people are very impressed with us. A lot of people are considerably older than me that walk considerably faster than me. <laughs> to be honest, but yeah. 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 And, and does it worry you that uh, you could turn out like the rest of us? I mean, that, uh, <laughs> that, that's quite a terrifying prospect, isn't it? <laughs> isn't uh, it? There are worse outcomes, you know. If I can still walk far when I'm old and grey, I'll be happy. We've got uh, Tamworth and Arden Church just up ahead, so enjoy your walk. <laughs> oh, you look, that's a nice sun hat. Yes, <laughs> need it in this weather. Richard Hicks is walking with wife Sally and daughter Jen. Do you want to stop and eat any food or do you want to keep on walking? Um, I'll probably eat a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind if you want to carry on. Yeah, I'm not going to be eating much more than You just said something about the distance. It's, it's going to be an awfully long way. Yeah. <laughs> Did you not know that when you started? <laughs> Leg five from Tanworth in Arden to Henley in Arden offers plenty of heritage amid pleasant countryside. The leading two o'clock starters are now making their way through the field of walkers. The heat isn't a boon, but dry ground might help them get to the finish inside 24 hours. Horrendous mud. A short distance on, Jill Green and Hilary Bell pass through ancient Mockley Wood. So, Jill, I made a comment now that we're going through Muckley Wood, which is ancient woodland. And I replied, and these are ancient walkers going yeah. in the ancient woodland. Yes, but not Hilary, because she's only no, 50. No, no, she's only 50. <laughs> <laughs> which is absolute comment, wonderful comment to make. <laughs> Even though I'm actually celebrating the 50th anniversary. Yes, so you did crochet union flags for That's right, the last year. Queen's Jubilee last year and um, now you're the only person who's done any crochet. Yeah. What is the LDWA coming to? The only one. <laughs> to celebrate. So yeah. now I've set a bit of precedent for myself because each one from now I'm going to have two little crochet symbols recognising the event. Jill, this is your, well, a significant one for you, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's my 20, well, this will be my third year. Yes. <laughs> you can't actually remember, is that right? <laughs> I can, I can. <laughs> oh, well. And you're already the oldest lady ever to finish 100. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Are you feeling confident about this one? Well, uh, yes, I, I want to finish, I do. 
That's all I need to do is finish. Yeah, and you never know, do you? You don't. Anything can happen. Yeah, but it hasn't. No. Has it ever happened? No, I've always managed to finish the ones I started. Just behind, first-timer Pam Manning oh, yeah. is in good company. Oh, that's better. Now, we had some nice food at the uh, checkpoint for. It's your first hundred. It's my first hundred. And uh, you've got experienced company. I have. Yeah. Oh, yes. Are they looking after you? They definitely are. <laughs> I need looking after... Two of the youngest walkers, Harry and Dylan, have fallen in step with Stephen Coveney, the longest-serving hundred-ear of them all. The pair of them are putting friendship to the test, but they've gone through a lot together since they started playing rugby at Kenilworth while still in primary school. After 50 years in the LDWA, Stephen is happy navigating the old way with Anne Wade's detailed route description. A narrow path leads walkers into Henley alongside the town's redundant golf course with late afternoon bird song for company and in one case, a loyal daughter. Debbie Nash, you're yes. not actually doing this event officially, are you? No, I'm just supporting my dad. Alan, 80 in July. Yeah. Yeah, are you feeling it? Uh, definitely. <laughs> but... I didn't think it'd take that long, Simon. Well, 80 years it get usually 80, takes. Get, get to 80, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's brilliant that you're still doing this, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, I can't think of anything better. The French Foreign Legion have been out and they've got you, haven't they? <laughs> we have indeed. March all day in these parts, Merton. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. At the checkpoint, a kit inspection. No torch, no going on. Familiar rituals, familiar faces. Many volunteers have done hundreds themselves, but now keep coming back to help out. But this year, one regular member of the breakfast team is attempting his first hundred. At 76, he could become the oldest ever first-time finisher. His name, Phil Chapman. All right, then. Oh, hi there. Is it easier running the breakfast stop than doing the hundred, really? Is it easier? Oh, uh, oh. Oh, well, that's a, that's a poser. At the moment, I'd rather be doing the 100. Yeah. <laughs> because I normally do the 400 fried eggs. 400 fried yeah, eggs? Yeah, I'm, I'm normally the egg man. You're the egg man? Isn't well, that a not this year, because I'm doing the 100. So, so I'm always taking over doing the eggs. Well, good luck with it. Yeah. <laughs> Sammy Dawkins started young. Well, how many is this, number six? This is number six. Right, and you're 25? Uh, yes. How the heck did you get into this? I think I know the answer and she's sitting next to you. Um, yep, yeah, it was, you know, You've got an arm. yeah. I've also got an arm that dragged me around on the rock and roll. Hang on, so this is your mum over here um, and you're, you're Nick. I am. And you're quite proud of him doing this. Yeah, very. Yeah. Yes. Okay, because... Um, there is some some people do follow their parents into this. Mm -hmm. No, it's the other way around, really. I mean, I've always walked. Sorry, you followed him into well this? into the, such long distances. Yes. Really? Mm. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, yes. The, uh, my aunt and uncle were already doing them, and then you did a lot of support crew and bits so for. Been sat in the so, car in so many places waiting for him. I thought perhaps I could give it a go. And it's, <laughs> why not? And I was sixty this year, so I thought right. Well, hang on, this isn't the first one. Yes, yeah, my first one. Probably my only one, but it is my first one. Oh my goodness. Mm. Right, well, you've got a very good guy, haven't you? <laughs> and your cousin Amy, uh, she's not on this no, one. But she, she does did it as well. She? Different, yeah, yeah. She, she now does hundreds about every month. So. What? Um, it, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. And she runs? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I can't keep up with, it, with her. So, in your family, how many hundred years are there? Um, uh, currently five, hopefully six. Uh, oh, tomorrow. oh, right, so you'll be well, number uh, six. Will I be six or five? Oh, I'm counting Andrew. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. six. Yeah. So Andrew is uh, Amy's partner. Partner, yeah, okay. Well, are you, I mean, because the heat is, is... It's been a bit warm today, yeah. but it's lovely, really, really pretty. And uh, may I see your feet? No. <laughs> okay. Good luck. That's great. Thank you very much. From the checkpoint, it's a short stride down the high street of the ancient capital of the Forest of Arden, past the Guildhall, 
to the mound of Beaudesert Castle, where Andy Todd has been capturing drone footage of walkers in the evening light. A few miles beyond, back on the Stratford Canal, is Wooten Woen Wharf with its cast iron aqueduct. From here, meadows lead to Aston Cantlow checkpoint. But some walkers are already passing through the home village of Mary Hello, Arden, Hello. William Shakespeare's mother, up ahead at Wilmcote. Not quite ready for torches. So, at end of day one, pretty well. Yes. Going all right? Yeah, fine. Yeah. I can hear at a little moment. bit. Of, yeah. At the moment. At the moment, yes. Oh. Hello, Simon. Hello, right. Hen. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Now, this is the uh, this is Anne's secret checkpoint. How many extra checkpoints have you got? Oh, I don't know. I just keep meeting. I keep meeting this blogger <laughs> along the way. Anne Bath is heading for her thirty-second completion. Oh, there's another secret checkpoint just behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Back at Aston Cantlow, still they keep coming. How is it going? Oh, Jill and Jim. It's not so hot now, which is better. It's cooling down. Yeah. I'm actually We're cold. doing good times, so. Yeah, yeah, there's loads of people behind you. I'll warn Stratford. Six miles ahead, walkers are arriving at the town of Shakespeare's birth in waves. Inside the Stratford checkpoint, opposite the church where Shakespeare's buried, cancer survivor Julia Warman is replacing lost energy. Which hundred is this for you? If I finish this one, Simon, this will be my 21st hundred. I've done 20 hundreds previously. But the last one I've completed was 2019, Hadrian. It was 2019, okay, well, wasn't it? That was it? a tough one. Yes, it was a tough one, but that was my 20th, so I was determined okay. to get around that. Now, um, last year you didn't succeed. No. But why not? Well, I set off, um, but it was only 12 months after I'd had um, surgery on my lung for lung cancer. And they removed the tumour, but at the same time they removed a third of my lung. And it was only a year after that that I decided, to, well, I set off on the Trans Pennine 100. And I think my body just thought it was a little bit too soon and it had a little bit of a meltdown. So sadly, I only got to 50 miles. But I'm back here today because I'm a lot fitter and a lot stronger. And I'm hoping I will get round today. Yes. It's really important after something like that, it must be really important to you to take on a challenge like this. Yeah, I think it just puts, you, it puts everything into perspective, doesn't it, Simon? And we, we enjoy what we do. And I just wanted to be able to carry on doing what I enjoy with people I love and care about. And um, it is tough, but I think mentally and physically you have to set yourself these challenges because you could just sit at home and feel sorry for yourself and there was no way I was going to do that. So that's why I've pushed myself to this limit. We've still got a long way to go. But so far, so good. Feeling better than I did this time last year, so that bodes well. Now, Ralph, you know Julia quite well. I do. Yeah, your husband. Yes. And when Julia was uh, the membership secretary of the LDWA, you actually did a lot of the work as well, didn't you? I did, yeah. it's such yeah. a big yeah. job. It's a big job, yeah. It's a, yeah. a two-man job, yeah. 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 And, but, but she got the glory. She did, yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's my 10th hundred if I finish today. And it's taken uh, you a while to get there. It has because I've been a member of the LDWS since 1979. 
In my early days, I did 200, and then I graduated on to doing quite a lot of uh, running. So I didn't do any hundreds. Um, and I met Julia, uh, and I did it in my third hundred, 25 years after my second hundred. So if I hadn't met Julia, I wouldn't be doing hundreds now. Is he supportive? Extremely, yeah. Not just not just in hundreds, but in life generally, he looks after me. He is. Could do it without Ralph. That's why I married him. I know, yeah. I will probably do Richard. Man, you, you're younger than me. Younger than Lee Yang Tang. This is a very nice top. What's going to happen when you step out the door? <laughs> I would be shining. I, I told people. I'll be standing on the hand <laughs> And it's because this is luminous. It's an army. How many of you are there? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> you are tired. You're tired it's but happy. Long, long laborious bit on the canal, so yeah. quite tricky. Mm. Alan, put your hat torch on and then you will see how shining. When I'm walking, my, my arm does light up. Well, then I'll, I'll let you talk. I'll let you have it from the back. Yeah, you can see my, my, my sleep. When it's shining. Let's take what one with the Christmas tree. Oh, <laughs> right, then stop pausing. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Can you see my sleep? Yes. As some head on their way, so others keep coming. The later arrivals passing Shakespeare's old school as they walk through a near deserted town. The people of Stratford now abed. At the checkpoint, Stephen Coveney is getting ready to go out into the night. This is the 50th anniversary of you entering your first hundred. It is. As you entered the very first hundred. I did. It's also, that... it's also the 50th anniversary of me joining the LDWA uh. in, in April, I think. And, and I celebrated that by doing the Waldsman 50. And, um, and they, they gave me a cake at the end with 50 <laughs> candles on. The, the very first one, um, I didn't actually manage to get to the start because <laughs> I got a new job um, as a trainee solicitor in... Durham, I was living in Sheffield, had to move that weekend and the idea of going into the office for my first day on the day after doing a hundred, I thought no this is not going to get me off to a good start. It took four attempts to get round. It will be my fourth, yeah, yeah, because there were two Clevelands, one of which I dropped out relatively early because I wasn't well, probably shouldn't have started. Um, the other one I did 84 miles and just coming towards the second and I really thought I'd, I cracked it I was walking up been a bit like this one ever so hot and um, in fact I was walking with a couple of friends and at one point we flogged up onto one of the moors and there was an old wagon that was falling to bits up there and we crawled underneath it for the it was the only bit of shade in the place <laughs> and I was just thinking oh I've got it one or two blisters but nothing bad and at that point, my toenail exploded out of me, my big toe. And then I did it <laughs> the following year. It took him 49 years to get his 10th completion. Yeah, according to the 100 uh, coordinator, he emailed me a few weeks ago to say he, he thought this was undoubtedly the record. Penny Darmody is doing her 7th 100 with Stephen. What's he like to walk with? Yeah, good. Wouldn't, or else he wouldn't still be doing it. <laughs> I mean, Steve has very good night vision and tends to hurtle off at high speed at night when I haven't got very good night vision. I'm always going, wait for me. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, <clears throat> we get on very well and we try and, you know, put one another right if we're about to make a mistake. Um, so after 49, well, now 50 years, he's getting the hang of it. Oh, I reckon so. <laughs> 28 people took the hard decision to retire at Stratford or one of the earlier checkpoints. All had completed qualifiers of at least 50 miles. Those who could pressed on. Yeah, I've got very bad knee pains. Oh, no. I've just got to keep going. I've got to get to halfway at least. 
427 people headed out of town and along the riverside, passing the Canal Basin and the world-famous Royal Shakespeare Theatre. Once over the bumpy Welcome Hills, they faced a steady stride across farmland to Norton Lindsay Checkpoint and on to Warwick. We'll see them there.